But there are also some fun uses of VUS, maybe not in the mapping science or industry. But you can see that the pizza can be delivered by a drone. It's still not used for commercial purposes, but here we can find some links when there would be the um, demo flights delivering pizza in Russia or here in the United States, the dummy copter that would deliver pizza to your door. There is also a restaurant that apparently serves sushi with a drone instead of sending a waiter to you. And for beer fans, you can... Uh, when you don't feel like uh, going out and getting yourself a beer, the beer can get you. Um, it's, of course, still um, not uh, not in commercial use. You can't buy a beer. I wonder how it will look like with the ID checking. <laughs> um, but uh, people have imagination. You can search YouTube and see how fun the drones can be, um, how people play with, play with it. Uh, why should you know how to use the UAS? Why is it uh, useful nowadays? Um, this is really convincing graph. This shows how much money is in the drone industry. So if you uh, want to participate in the rapidly growing field with a lot of um, impact and also a lot of innovation that comes from the money, uh, this is definitely the place to go. So uh, this is the perspective for 2025. Um, how, how many times it grows over the time. And although the most money you can see is in the filming and entertaining entertainment um, field, the second biggest area is, uh, is mapping. So... It may look insignificant compared to the green field, but if you look at the actual millions and millions of dollars that are in the industry, you can predict how much uh, more advanced will be the technology and how many more solutions will be available by the time uh, we reach the end of the, the graph and then just uh, we can move further. If the money is not convincing you enough, and you want to see the actual scientific and research purposes. Why do we need UAS to obtain data that cannot be obtained in a different way? Uh, there is a, there are different ways of uh, right now established for uh, um, for uh, acquiring spatial data. The traditional terrestrial techniques, um, and then the satellite and manned aircraft. This is something that existed before. There is now something in between that appeared. So what is the pros of the terrestrial techniques? It can never be replaced in, uh, in, in the precision, in uh, the accuracy, and the, the high resolution. Uh, but it's also the, the labor intensive and uh, it's, of course, only in the line of sight. And some sites are just not accessible to for a man to go there. Um, then we uh, had available the satellite and manned aircraft aerial imagery um, that covers larger areas. Uh, the satellite spectral ability is outstanding. Uh, um, and uh, the manned aircraft can have also high resolution because it flies... Um, uh, you can fly lower as well, but um, it's uh, it's then expensive, and uh, there's weather dependency, and uh, there's it's not available in remote regions. There are some terrestrial constraints about having an airport, um, and uh, for small project, it's just not efficient. Uh, the satellite, there is always a time like we cannot control the satellite and just shoots a picture. When it is uh, when the uh, this area of the Earth is exposed to the satellite, we cannot uh, control the, the um, temporal resolution. Uh, so now we have something in between, so we can reach the areas that cannot be reached by a human person with the unmanned vehicle, with the higher accuracy than the satellite or the manned aircraft. 
um, and uh, uh, we can also save a lot of uh, a lot of money, especially for small projects. And we have variety of solutions that will uh, the range the range of the resolution, the money, and the sensors are just uh, r- the possibilities are endless. Uh, the the constraints is to still the the regulations that are develop developing and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the barriers uh, soon here. Um, the constantly changing legislation and regulations are not only uh, a constraint; it's not actually stopping development so much because the research goes on. It's just whenever the market is booming, whatever people are buying, the more money is put into developing these technologies. And people are buying only what is legal. So if something reaches beyond the legal operations of the UAS, it's it's not developing so quickly. But in the meantime, the small UAS that are in use right now are developing so rapidly because of the regulations that are targeting this are enabling use of this type of the UAS. There is uh, also political and societal acceptance. It's changing uh, right now because of the abundance of drones. But even a couple years ago, the drone, uh, then the association was immediately like war or weapons or someone is spying on me. Right now, with the um, the number of drones flying around, it's more people are used to it. But still, the issues of um, of uh, safety, of privacy, of social acceptance are can be a barrier for the development. You can also think about your own uh, what you consider a barrier for the development, and also if you are already thinking about the project, what is what do you, would you like to use the UAS for uh, in your project for the course or in your research in the project that you're actually right now working on you can see what will be the barrier there um what uh, what is the problem for you do you think it's the legal issues do you think it's the um the requirements for uh, the um, of the terrain or the weather restrictions or the technology maybe you want to do something that hasn't been invented yet I invite you to do some research and um, I'm thrilled to see how you deal with the assignments. What are your um, your picks for the UAS that you're going to be talking about? And um, in the next lecture, we're going to cover extensively the rules and regulations, uh, how to safely and legally use the UAS uh, in the United States.